Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders board. Coming up here on today's show, the Las Vegas Raiders released their first unofficial Raiders depth chart. So what I figured I would do here is roll through each and every single position, both on the offensive side and defensive side of the football, and give you my reaction and analysis before the Raiders preseason game up against the San Francisco 49ers. Before I get into each and every position, what I want to know right now is down in the comment section, which depth chart are you most interested to see unfold this offseason? Are you interested to see the wide receiver battle? Maybe you're interested to see the offensive line, the corners, linebackers, defensive ends, whatever position you're most excited to see, spam it right now down in the comments. Let's first start here at the Raiders quarterback depth chart, which no surprises whatsoever. Jim Garoppolo is going to be your number one. Brian Hoyer at number two, Aiden O'Connell three. And I know a lot of people will probably overreact to the fact that O'Connell is number three, but this is the Raiders' plan. Like, they want him to just be sitting back, learning the Raiders' offense, learning the McDaniel system, because the biggest reason why they brought in Hoyer is not for him to actually play, for him to be that practice quarterback, but for him to mainly groom Aiden O'Connell. Chase Garbers is also on the roster to help play during the preseason. So, that was my breakdown around the Raiders quarterbacks. If you guys ever want to follow me on Twitter, hopefully you all know where to be able to find me. I am at MitchellRens365. With the quarterbacks, let's not talk about the running backs. And you're going to see a name that point blank, like he's not on the depth chart, but he's going to be on my depth chart. It's Josh Jacobs. And he hasn't signed the franchise tag yet, which obviously he is technically not a member of this team until he does sign it. But your RB1 going into the preseason against the Niners is Amir White. Then it's Amir Abdullah. Your fullback's going to be Jacob Johnson. And then your backs as such are Brandon Bolden, Britton Brown, and Sincere McCormick. The most notable things from this for me is you know Zamir is going to be the main guy. Amir is mainly going to be your third down back to just kind of catch the football here and there. I will admit, if the Raiders do not have Josh Jacobs on this roster, I don't think that there's a reason to keep Jacob Johnson. I'd ship him out and just say, hey, thanks for last season, but unfortunately we don't have our main back, so there's no real need to keep you. I really want to see how sincere McCormick looks, though, during the preseason because to me he is better than Brent Brown and he's better than Brandon Bolden. Before we get into the wide receivers, we have a subs battle that I need to win. And the Raiders report is taking a command to lead, but guess what? I'm not trying to blow that second half lead. I'm doing a sub battle with the 49ers report here at Chat Sports because if these guys are going to battle on the field, I want to battle on YouTube. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications because we're going to get wild on Sunday and hopefully you're there watching the Raiders take down the 49ers here on the Raiders report. Let's go now to the wide receiver depth chart and for the receiver one group, you have Devontae Adams. Jacoby Myers is your number two. Hunter Renfro is going to be working in the slot. But the Raiders listed certain receivers underneath the main guys, and I do want to hit those notes real quick. You got Philip Dorsett and Keelan Cole. They were listed underneath Devontae Adams. DeAndre Carter was listed underneath Jacoby Myers, and then Trey Tucker underneath Hunter Renfro. What I gathered from that is this Raiders team has a clear-cut top six receivers. And it's been the six receivers that I will continually say – will end up making this 53-man roster. It's Philip Dorsett, DeAndre Carter, Trey Tucker, Jacoby Myers, Hunter Renfro, Devontae Adams. So no real surprises there from the wide receiver room. Let's now go to the tight ends where, same thing, Austin Hooper's your number one, Michael Mayer's your two, though for people who are actually close to the organization, I'd say they actually know that it's more like Hooper's 1A, Mayer's 1B, if you will. The Raiders moved on from O.J. Howard to give him an op another opportunity because they like Jesper Horstead so much. And they recently signed Jacob Hollister, who's just mainly a blocker, just an extra body, if you will, during the preseason, during training camp. You're going to have an opportunity to see Cole Fotheringham, Schnenker, the UDFA out of Auburn on top of that. But at the end of the day, there's only real three tight ends that you really need to monitor from this Raiders team. Let's go to the offensive lines. I'm going to stay on this one a little bit longer because there's a lot more to dissect. And if you watched the show recently, I've actually got this one pretty spot on in the past where Colt Miller's your left tackle, Parker's the backup, and he's going to be battling with Justin Huron to keep that top left tackle spot behind Miller because of that swing tackle ability. Dylan Parham might be your best offensive lineman from reports that I have heard, which is saying a lot because I know how good Colt Miller is. Natane Moody is going to be battling there for another spot on the offensive guard. 
Andre James is going to be your center. They might decide to keep Grasso. I personally wouldn't because in a pinch, if James were to go down, you'd be able to put in Dylan Parham. Then you'd be able to start a Greg Van Roten. You'd be able to start in the Tain Moody. Hell, you might even be able to put him a Clendon Curtis in there at right guard. The biggest thing that I look at at this is the fact that they have Alex Bars listed as their starting right guard. The way that I'm going to just say this is this. Last season, they had Lester Cotton listed as their starting right guard, and he didn't even make the 53-man roster. If the Raiders trot out Bars again, week one against the Broncos, I'm going to be very disappointing in this coaching staff because Bars isn't even... He's not better than Van Rowe, and he's not better than Natane Moody. Hell, I don't even know if he's better than McClendon Curtis. And then on the right tackle spot, I know that they love their Munford, and he's going to battle Illuminor if Munford does end up winning that right tackle spot. I hope that this Raiders organization is smart enough to be able to kick Illuminor in at right guard. I see the bots are back in the live chat, so if you guys could, get rid of the bots right now. And if you want to go put your money where your mouth is, whether you want to bet on the Raiders to win the Super Bowl, I know. Sounds like a crazy thing. Maybe you want to bet on the Raiders for the to win the AFC West. If you want to bet on the Raiders to win their first game against the Denver Broncos, you can do all that with our sportsbook partner, and they have the best deal on the internet. If you're like, Mitch, what is it? I'm glad you asked, Patrick B. So if you go to chatsports.com slash Raiders, and you use promo code Raiders125, you get 125% deposit bonus, which means if you put down $100 with your first deposit, they're going to give you $125 for free to bet with. It's literally the best deal out there. And if you look right now at the current AFC West odds, the Raiders at plus 1,400 to win the AFC West, I get that it's not likely, but that's okay. If right now you were to risk $10 at BetUS, you would have the opportunity to win $140 if the Raiders win the AFC West. And I've seen crazy things happen every year in the NFL. They always happen. Is it really that outlandish to see the Raiders win the AFC West? Some injuries might have to happen. But then again, everybody picks the Raiders to finish dead last, and they haven't finished dead last in quite a long time. Let's now go to the defensive side of the football here on the Raiders report. We're going to look at the defensive ends. And the way that the Raiders have the DEs listed is essentially like this. you got their left defensive ends. you got your right defensive ends. And the names that I really want to poke at here are Adam Plant Jr. because... Adam Plant Jr. is going to be battling against Jordan Willis and also against Isaac Rochelle for that final defensive end spot. Crosby, Wilson, Chandler Jones, they're locked and loaded. They're going to be making the team. After that, though, there is a lot more up for grabs. So that's going to be the battle I watched during the preseason. We go from defensive ends to the big guys up the middle, and there was a lot of surprises here. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Jerry Tillery was listed as the defensive tackle one at nose tackle. John Jenkins, Adam Butler were at number two. Matthew Button, Neil Farrell Jr. were down there a little bit. Nade, or Jade Sil wow. Nesta Jade Silvera was also down there. Byron Young. To me, this team's going to end up keeping six defensive tackles. And honestly, I don't think Adam Butler and I don't think John Jenkins even make the roster. So the fact that they were put where they were is the example that I like to give a lot of Raider fans out there where it's like, Sometimes the depth chart gets put out there like that just to see what those guys have during the preseason. I do not anticipate Adam Butler, and I do not anticipate John Jenkins to make that 53-man roster. Let's now go to the linebackers group, which, honestly, when the Raiders put their linebacking depth chart out, I had to switch up a lot of things. I had to move Divine Diablo to middle linebacker, Robert Spillane to outside linebacker, which, depending how the Raiders use Spillane, I'll be very curious about because to me, he's not an outside linebacker at all. He has no coverage ability. Diablo's a good defender in terms of against the run. Needs to get better in the pass. And then you sign Darius Harris. You have Drake Thomas, the UDFA. Armari Bernie's the player you drafted. There will be tons and tons and tons of competition around this linebacker room. But I also look at that room and I'm like, man, like, you're telling me we can't add anybody else to that room? If it was up to me, we would sign at least one more linebacker before the Raiders' regular season. And if you want to see my top four Raiders linebackers, I put out a video on Tuesday, so please go check it out. All right, y'all, if you haven't already interacted with me on social media, please make sure you do so. Whether you call it X or whether you call it Twitter, you can hit me up at MitchellRent365. I'm on IG. I'm also on Cameo as well at all of those places. If maybe you need to give a birthday shout-out or, I don't know, you want to make me drink a boot, go ahead, do it, Cameo. Locals, I'm at RaidersReport.Locals.com, and I'm really excited because once the regular season gets going, 
We do two live shows a week, Monday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time, and then we do even more competitions amongst diehard Raider fans. You can join locals for $10 a month at RaidersReport.Locals.com. Let's now go to the cornerback room here, and no big surprises. They had Ja'Cory and Bennett there, Marcus Peters there, Nate Hobbs. The biggest surprise for me personally was seeing how far they had down Duke Shelley because to me, Shelley's the fourth best corner on this roster. And when you have him underneath Brandon Faison, and maybe they did that because Faison's injured and they know he's not going to be out there, which definitely something to note. But you put him that low, I think about it. I'm like, man, is he going to make the roster? Then they have Meek Robertson, who worked with a lot of the ones during joint practice today against the San Francisco 49ers. He's ranked underneath Tyler Hall. David Long Jr., when I have where the, I see where they have him ranked, I don't know if he's even making the roster. So I did a surprise cut candidate video two months ago, put David Long Jr. on that. Judging by that first depth chart that they released, I kind of like that answer a lot. So we're going to go from cornerbacks, and now we're going to work our way to the safety room here. And you got Epps, Merrick, those are your top two guys. Roderick Teamer was ranked pretty high, which I was kind of surprised that they put him over Chris Smith. It could be very similar to the whole Adam Butler, John Jenkins thing where you just decide to put a veteran. And I'm going to use air quotes here on a veteran for Roderick Teamer compared to Chris Smith. But then you have Isaac Paul, or Isaiah Palomeo, where Palomeo is no doubt the number three safety as it stands right now on this roster. And he's been one hell of a player, and he continues to show that he deserves to be one of those top safeties used, and he's going to be used a lot. But right now, battling it out for those final spots, I mean, I don't know if they decide to keep five safeties or not, but it's between Jaquan Johnson, Roderick Teamer, Isaiah Palomeo, all battling it out. Let's all go to the safety group here. Not safety, uh, special teams, excuse me. Daniel Carlson, A.J. Cole, Jacob Bobbenmoyer, kicker, punter, long snapper. Then the Raiders listed DeAndre Carter as your punt returner and as your kick returner. So, I see that, and I almost think, like, no matter what, if you thought that the Raiders are going to move on from DeAndre Carter, it's not happening. They see big-time special teams coming up for him. That's how they're going to use them. But having Amir Abdullah, Hunter Renfro, as the backup punt returner and as the backup kick returner tells me that I was yet again right that they're going to move on from DJ Turner and that they are going to move on from Keelan Cole. So after looking at the Raiders' updated depth chart, again, this is not the official one. Every single time, the Raiders are going to put out a brand new depth chart before every single preseason game. This is the first one they've put out that the team actually, McDaniels and Ziegler have put out, so a lot of people are talking about it. Which spot, which position group was the most surprising? Let me know. I'll give you some shout-outs here live on the show.